What's up, Dragon Brood? So today we're doing something by request of the audience, actually. I put up a poll on my Facebook gaming stream a couple days ago. Actually, no, it was yesterday. And actually just asked everybody, like, hey, what's a color combination we should do for either streams or video or whatever coming up? And by a large margin, Golgari won. And then that put me in a little bit of a situation because I wasn't really sure if I really wanted to do that because we kind of did Witherbloom stuff pretty heavily at the beginning of the season. And then there's a lot of that still floating around already. So I was like, okay, I'll do it if I can come up with a different way to do it kind of here mid season that looks different than a lot of the other Witherbloom stuff. And then of course it has to still hold up against all the proper usual suspects, but I think we got something pretty close here. So hopefully it pleases everybody. Those of you that are fans of Golgari or Witherbloom, hopefully you're happy with this. <laughs> But we'll see. Again, this is just by request, so every once in a while, you know, we go ahead and do it. Don't forget also, if you would like to submit requests, go ahead and hit us up over in the Discord or come by one of the streams. That's the best way to get your options requested, but also maybe get help with the deck or something. But for now, let's take a look at this Golgari mid-range list. Okay, so there's not going to be any real surprises, I think, in the card choices as much as just kind of the numbers of everything that we're playing. And this did take some time. It took us about the better part of three hours to get to a version that we actually liked that could hold up against a fair amount of the decks and still give you a good amount of play. You do have to be very careful when playing this deck, though, because every card feels important. So you don't want to just like frivolously use removal, for instance, like each type has a thing it's good at killing and not. And that is very important. So don't just throw your cards around because you're going to be upset a couple turns later that you just don't have access to that thing anymore. Starting at the top, though, we do have three duress, which. This is one of the best cards you can have against the ultimatum list. So it kind of makes sense that we're going down this road, but it's also not worthless against the other decks. Like it's only really bad against probably like Winota decks because they play only creatures. But outside of those decks, it actually has targets and everything else, whether you're trying to get a Maul of the Skyclaves and an Embercleave, a Great Hinge, you know, just get rid of burn spells in the mono red decks, like, you know, opposing uh, Binding of the Old Gods. Like there's plenty of things you can still so, so don't get too worried about it being in here. But, oh, well, actually, let me say this, too. I actually did build this one with a sideboard because I do think this functions actually a little bit better as a best of three deck. And we'll talk about that after we play all the games uh, and you can see what we're, where, what we're going for. So let me have three Acquisitions Experts, three Heartless Act, two Scavenging Ooze. Uh, these are all cards. I'm kind of going through them pretty quickly because most players know what these are at this point. None of these are new from the latest sets. Uh, Shovel, though, actually does a few things here. It allows us to get extra life and extra cards and kind of draw the game out a little bit, which is what we want. We want to get past that, that mid game and get a little bit to the later stages. The downside is Shovel doesn't really combo well with Heartless Act, so that's a thing you're going to run into every once in a while. But outside of that, I think it's the right card for those lists. Now, granted, that could lead you changing Heartless Act to something like, uh, I don't know, we could just say like eliminate, but then you also can't kill big things like uh, Gargaros if you want to. So just something like that uh, to keep in mind, you know, and you can also respond during your upkeep. So if Heartless, if Shovel would trigger, you can go ahead and use Heartless to kill a thing before the gets the counter. So like there's some weird ways you could work around it, but it's not as big of a hurdle as you'll see in the games that we play. Then we have a couple of Murderous Riders, uh, just good all around removal. Also some lifelink, which this deck really likes. Uh, three Nighthawk Scavengers, uh, not just lifelink here, but also Death Touch, and lets us block dragons and rogues very well. Then we have a couple of Land of War Visionaries. I'm not sure what the right number of these is to include. I feel like three is probably correct, but I really didn't have anywhere else I wanted to cut from. Unless you want to gamble and cut a land, because we're at 26, it's possible you can go down to 25, and that's okay. It doesn't feel great, but I mean, if you're playing a third Visionary, it feels a little better. So maybe that's the right choice. So Rolf, Realm Eater. This card did a lot of work for us. Uh, this is one of the few spots where this card really does work well in these uh, Golgari Witherbloom mid-range list. So if you're looking for a spot to play Saralf, well, here you go. <laughs> Actually, like I said, enjoy playing with this card. It does a whole lot of work. 
Then we're playing two Belfal Mastery, which I like a lot because Belfal Mastery doesn't destroy, which means you get around having to worry about stuff like Selfless Savior because it just exiles outright, which is really nice. You just don't have to worry about like the All Seed of Life's Bounty, but outside of that, like this actually is pretty good at taking down most things, and it gives you another really good thing to use at instant speed against the ultimatum decks, right? So if you know they're going to go off, you leave your mana up. With this and another removal card, sometimes you can just take out the things that they go get anyway, and then you're kind of just back to square one on even footing. So keep that in mind too. Don't be too fast to uh, want to use your stuff. If you think they're going to ultimatum, then try to slow down a little bit and leave yourself an option to kill like a creature or a planeswalker and give yourself a shot at winning on that next turn. Then to Questing Beast. Uh, we're still learning that Questing Beast is still a damn good magic card. I, I mean, we've won many games still against the ultimatum decks because you have the creature after they try to sweep the board or do something, you know. There's been times they did actually ultimatum and we still won because of this. So, you know, we can't, can't turn away from this card, really. Three Binding of the Old Gods. It was three for a while, it was four for a while, now it's back to three. Don't know what the right number is, but the card's just versatile and good. Just destroys all types of things. Let you go find mana to play your Planeswalkers. Uh, which, speaking of, we do have Vivian Monsters Advocate. Just gets to make creatures. We don't necessarily use the other side to go find something cheaper. But there are some times you do want to do that. You know, maybe to set up a Nighthawk Scavenger or something to come over the top and finish if you're playing like a Questing Beast. So not often you're going to be able to do it, but sometimes. One Professor Onyx, uh, kind of a closer. We do have a good amount of spells, so sometimes you just get to the late stage of the game. You get to where you're starting to drain the opponent whenever you're killing their stuff on top of it, you know, helping you find things to stay ahead. And it's just removal for their biggest thing, which is also is nice. Now we're playing two Vorinclex, because we do get the mana to cast these, and if you get those with the Planeswalkers out, you can just end the game, which is nice. Then a pair of Garricks. This card does the most work of all the different Planeswalkers. You know, and it's funny, too, because Garrick's like the most disrespected of the big Planeswalkers, it felt like, but really does shine in a deck like this. Uh, as for lands, we're a little bit all over the place, but I think this is where we wanted to be. We got one Castle Locked Wayne, seven Swamp, six Forest, four Dark Boar Pathway, two Necro Blossom Snarl, three Temple of Malady, two Crawling Barons. And I would even say it's possible you could cut a land somewhere and get one more Castle Locked Wayne in there. If you wanted to without disrupting your mana too much. But, you know, if you want the deck, you can get it down below. But, hey, we got some really good games in store. And then, like I said, on the other side of the games, we will talk about why we think this is a better best of three deck and some things you can do. All right, I'll keep. Oh, no. All right, let's see what we can do. Well, this is not looking great. Though we do have Scavenger, and we do have Binding. So, maybe, maybe we can get at it. Oh, wait, wait. Huh. Well, now, that's a thing. All right, so we have to pass so we can Heartless Act to kill either. Okay. The opponent puts the counter on that. So we can target it. And then they can try to just save that. And then we don't get attacked but for two here. So we're okay with that. So that doesn't move their plan forward at all, which we like. And then we can try to go with this. So now it's a 4-3 because of all the stuff in the graveyard. So we'll actually get to gain some life back. We can fight down Speaker of the Heavens if necessary. All right. We have a Professor Onyx. We've got a Baleful Mastery. So we got some things coming together here. Because that's the real concern. Now the question is, if we attack them down to 16, or 18, what's the most they could do? They could find another mall and maybe do 4, 5? So they'd be up to 23? 
but we'd be at 20 minus 5 is 15 so that's not the worst ever so this exchange is weird but let's do it uh golgari is a color combination not a strategy it just means it's a green black deck okay now do we want to use one of these at some point i think we just do this for now cost them a card i don't know what they're not playing so this is a little concerning oh that's a thing well son of a hmm i have some foul words there <laughs> all right well, now we know some things. They must have a couple of Blade Masters or something. Or Historian. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let them attack. We're going to sign our blockers. And I'm just going to give the opponent a card. I'm going to use the alternate cost on this. Get rid of that duder. I feel like it's worth it for them to have a card, especially if we can draw an untapped land here. Or we could just fail. You know, that's the other option. I mean, we attack? I mean, if they block, we get to kill a speaker anyway, so we're down. Alright. They had another one. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, no blocks here. I mean, they just gained their life. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to put the target on the Blade Historian. All right. Because I was like, if we drew a removal card, we were going to want to kill the Historian anyway, right? That was going to be the play the whole time. All right. So, well, this is probably how we lose by attacking here. But, nah, We'll see. Daxos. All right. Annoying. But, oh, that's worse for us. That's actually way worse. That is leaps and bounds worse. Oh, man. All right. So now we got to take six. We're going to take ten. Yeah, I mean, we kind of have to draw a land. We have to draw a land or a removal card here. So I'm down. Let's do it. All right. I was going to say, if we didn't, we were just dead anyway. So whatever. Uh, though we could do it with Professor Onik. No, we have two Garricks. Let's do Garrick first. And if they just have a third one, they have a third one. Like, we'll just have to deal with it. Alright, no attacks just in case. Because, I mean, who knows. Okay, another speaker. Not so scary. That doesn't really do much here. I mean, if they want to trade for a shovel, like, so be it. I'm okay with that. We have a backup one. They don't know that, but... Ooh. I like all of this activity in our hand right now. Let's make dudes. You're not scared of dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we can do this. Then we can Vivian. Make something with reach so we don't, so we don't get caught out of the blue. Attack enough that the opponent can't gain life easily and get out of trouble. Spellbinder. Cute. You can go Onyx. You can go Garrick. There's a good chance we're just going to kill a Spellbinder anyway. Oh, well, we get to do it. Oh, not so much the easy way because it has counters on it. <laughs> uh... Problem is, I'm actually sort of incentivized to just let them trade. Like, I don't care that much. Really. Because I'm kind of like, all right, they block cool we gain some life they lose a spellbinder we get a card we get three life but then what are they going to do after that right i might even just attack with these wolves too because like yeah
Because part of me is really sitting here thinking, like, what's the opponent going to do here? Oh, they didn't even block. Well, that's a peculiar thing. We will adapt to any hmm. threat. Do I waste this other Garrick? I mean, okay, this one's gonna go ahead and make wolves. You're not scared of dogs, are you? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and play this one. This Keep curse. the new one. This thrumming. I need them gone. Gone. Yeah, like. Let's do this. I have a feeling we're going to be setting up a scavenging ooze just to die, but some creatures just get to live a tough life. Actually, I'm okay with that. Hopefully, they have to use a frostbite on it, so that increases the odds of Saralf and Nighthawk scavenger living. Uh, no blocks? No blocks. What you got? All right. Excellent. That's exactly how we wanted that to go down. Okay. Let's try this. Uh, but block, we stomp. Nah, I'm not into that yet. We can wait. Oh, no, just a Rimrock Knight was going to get us. Another one? Nope, I guess they're going to save it. And just play that. Okay. Well, good to know that the opponent's up to no good. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hoping that this... Okay, it was not. <laughs> Alright. Could Ember Cleave this mess, but you're probably just gonna put it on the Rimrock Knight. If they don't, it opens up the doors for a couple of things to happen here. Okay. And now the Ember Cleave? But now you can put the Ember Cleave on... Oh, nope. Just a, yet another Rimrock Knight. Okay. Cool. That works. That ended up being a much less painful turn than I guess it could have been. We will leave that. That seems great. So I can use that alongside a Saralf next turn. So we can Saralf plus Heartless Axe. Get that up to a 4-4. Four, four, possibly block something. Oh, they found it an axe, though. That sucks. That, that hurts our heart inside, folks. That is not good. Alright. So we'll do that. The good news is, though, we know their hand's empty. We're not worried about an Ember Cleave. We're not worried about a Torburn. So those things are excellent. We can actually kill an Axe. We can kill Rimrock Knight. That puts two counters on Saralf, and then we get to wipe out the whole opponent's board here. No attacks. Actually, do we? We're going to trade this anyway for the Anax. I can't imagine the opponent blocks with Anax. I mean, if they do, I don't think we care, so sure. Okay, so they are going to do it. Fair enough. I mean, I guess now we just get to save for, like, a Torbrin. So that's cool, I guess. Arnie's also cute. Same situation, though, effectively. 
I mean, they attack with everything. And they activate Arnie. We kill that. We get a 5-5. Five, five. We take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we block. We will take action, wipe that whole thing out. We'll go ahead and play this since it has lifelink. And we'll get in there for three. All right, that's about as good as we could have had to recover. Fireblade charger, sure. And because Baleful Mastery exiles, we can stop potential charger damage if we really want to we're at four gonna be at six we could play this just as a blocker we risk giving the opponent a card which could be dangerous but i'm okay with that let's let's go for it we'll risk it for the biscuit the opponent's only at seven so i mean if they take five that's bad for them too All right. Robber, you are not going to do it here, friend. We would take four? We would take five? No, because if they block... Well, no, I just take three, because I'll just block a Rimrock Knight. And they get a card? That's annoying, but sure, yeah. I mean, there would could have been a downside that they could have got one of our like heartless acts, but then I would have just killed something with the baleful mastery, so it wasn't really a risk. And we have way more than enough to kill the opponent now. All right. This one we'll keep. I mean, we're a mana short of getting to do what we want to do. But otherwise... Oh, look. More Winota shenanigans. Well, maybe we'll actually have removal for when Winota shows up. Actually, it probably won't matter because I'll probably get like a dog beforehand. That'll be our luck. Alright, Professor... A Heartless Act here, followed by a land, would be perfect. That's what we want. That wasn't even remotely it, deck. You weren't even trying. Well, okay, I guess we pass. Alright, well... Sadly, even if we get a land, the best thing for us to do... Well, we're not going to get to do it now. <laughs> I was going to say it was going to be a binding of the old gods, but uh, that's being taken off the table, I imagine. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not even sure. Like, I mean, I guess it's nicer to have the Baleful Mastery, so if Winota shows up, we can just offer, which is cool. Well, with no land, that is a non-starter. Uh, this is literally the only way we've lost to a note is when we have the cards and we don't get the land. Uh, that, that hurts more than anything. So now they get to a note. Oh, Blade Historian. Well, that's the same difference. Just as bad. Uh, okay, so opponent attacks... With just that. Okay, so they know the deal. They know what's up. Alright. Actually, uh, see, this is terrible. Because if they don't have Winota, we give them a better chance to get it. And we really would just rather kill these things off, ultimately. But we also don't want to take a crap ton of damage from a flyer we can't deal with for the next couple turns. Uh, this, this is the life of no land. When you miss.
<laughs> okay. I mean, I guess. If this is what we gotta do. I mean, it is an answer. I can't be that upset. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a thing. Uh, sad. Okay, well, I guess we just gotta kill this other duder. Much as I want to take out the non-humans, I mean... I mean, get a questing beast? No, I guess that's fair. Just take out the thing I can cast, I suppose. Another professor. Makes sense. I mean, we're, we're dead so many different ways here, honestly. Like, we died of so much stuff right now. I don't even know if it's worth playing Acquisitions Expert. I'm just going to run out of Questing Beasts. I mean, at this point, I'm pretty sure if they get a Blade Master or a his Blade Historian or a Winota, we just die. We missed two turns of getting our turn four land, so that's that's not good. Okay, I guess they don't have it. I mean, I don't know what the rest of those cards are they're holding on to, but sure. Another professor. Sure. All right. You get to make a inkling. I make a 3-2. Okay, that's reasonable. I mean, I guess we do this. I mean, we're only getting one card. Whoa, why haven't they played that already? Especially against the deck I'm playing. That would have made a lot of sense. I mean, if we get the land here, do we even just make wolves? I mean, I don't know. We get one shot at killing the Spellbinder, so I mean, I guess we do that. But then Garrick just dies anyway. Like, I don't know what's even going on at the moment. We didn't hit it, so we don't have to make that decision. I don't know if that's good or bad. Alright, so we do that. We can remove two things and have another 4-4. Four, four. Which isn't stellar but it does negate some attack damage so that's okay i guess oh no oh no okay well that does change things a little bit that is not the best thing okay well this isn't bad this is actually okay here all right so we're at eight there's five in the air, so we're going to go to three. This would put us at one. But we could kill that to gain three to go to four. Okay. I mean, the opponent should just attack with everything, though, right? Like... That's the real play. They should have done that last turn, actually. Yeah, if they'd have just attacked with everything last turn, we'd already been dead this turn. Yeah, literally, they just have to turn everything sideways. There you go. I was like, they could have just done that last turn, and we'd have been dead. <laughs> this hand is, is pretty medium at best. Though, not going to lie, that second duress might help a lot here. Especially now that we see that it's the Is It Spells deck. Uh, Do I even care that they have a Crush the Weak? Because that doesn't even deal damage to anything else but creatures. And all of our creatures are bigger than three toughness, right? Except for just the Visionary. Oh, that's not true. The 1-2. But I mean, I guess we don't really care. I guess let's take Mystical Dispute. 
I mean, I guess I could have taken the Crush of the Week first and then just take Mystical Dispute because I have double duress, but like, eh. Like, it really isn't that big of a deal to us. So we just let it ride. All right, let's get you out there. See what you can do. Mm-mm-mm. Would like some mana to go with this, though. Okay, well, since the opponent played that the way they did and we didn't draw land unfortunately I feel like you're either going to use it or you're not here so shatter skull smashing in and negates uh, those suck for us but I will let you have the negate because you need mana way more than anything right now and if somehow we magically get to where we have Garrick, Garrick. <laughs> Though realistically, they'll probably play dragon. We'll try to kill the dragon and then they'll counter. counter. Alright. Attack with our one. See if we get to resolve uh, Sorolf. I mean, maybe they found another mystical dispute or something. Oh, they're probably reading it to figure out how it works. Rolf's huge in that artwork, man. I, I live up in the northwest where we have tall trees. That means Rolf's like 80 feet or something. He's gigantic. Uh-oh. I guess this means Rolf's just dead. Or not? Okay, I don't know what that pause was about then. Because you either have some type of burn spell or you have some type of counter spell, right? Because you didn't draw cards or anything else there. We know what the Fortell card is. That's just crush the weak, so that doesn't do anything to either of our creatures. This has been a weird game. Like, we missed our third land. Opponent's just going to make treasure here, I guess. To increase the odds of getting to play a dragon. But here's what's funny. When they blow up treasure, you're going to put counters on Sarolf. So that actually helps us out. And they got rid of two negates. So does that mean we actually get to kill a dragon? Maybe? This feels really suspicious. But I'm in. Unless they maybe just picked up another negate. Which is always possible. Or maybe they kept like a mystical dispute or something instead, thinking it's better late game. They can't quite activate their face of saving yet. Hmm. I mean, they can, but they wouldn't be able to block with it. So now they're probably playing that guessing game, right? Like, do I have a spot removal or not? So we're going to do that and then crush the weak? Okay, that's fine. I mean, we have another shovel. They don't know this, obviously, but, like, we're fine. Whatever. And then I get it, because then they can play Bone Crusher to block the Seraph. Or at least force us to use another removal. Oh, they just had two Bone Crushers. Well, okay. That, that is a thing. Though that's weird. Because then they could have just targeted Seralf and done that. And then, Oh, but if they sacrifice that, Seralf's actually going to get a counter. So that wouldn't... 
No, that would still work, because that would be four total damage. Yeah, they could have taken out Saral Factor there. Interesting that they did not, but they very well could have. Uh, well, now we could do this and target something, because we know the coast is clear, basically, now. All right. So if they put just the giants in the way, that's fine. If they put the dragon out, we try to just kill dragon and turn this into a 4-4. Four -four. Maybe. Then we have Nighthawk that would end up being a 4-3 because we're going to put a creature in the graveyard. Unfortunately, Saroth doesn't get the easy counter now from the uh, treasure being sacrificed, so that's not a thing anymore. All right. When it's just passing. So they're just going to try to use the land? Is that their plan here? Okay, well, I don't hate this. So we can attack. They activate. We know what all their cards are. So then we just kill that. And then Saralf ends up getting a counter anyway. Attacks for four, so we get five in and then get to play the scavenger. All right, I'm down. These are words that all sound good to me. Sure. All right, and we put a land in the yard, so still got a 4-3 out of the deal. Now they're also down a mana. So if they do want to play the dragon, they're going to make Saralf a 5-5. Yep. Well, there you go. I hope I met the brief, so to speak, that people were looking for out of this. Uh, now, we did say we're going to talk about why it's a better best of three instead of best of one. And here I think it's because very particularly, I think the deck actually does pretty well against mono red. I think it even handles some of the mono white stuff pretty well. I think it even handles a fair amount of the Yorian decks pretty well based on what happened on the stream. The downside is though you do have some matchups against things like really the Winota decks in general. Those made up the majority of our losses. And I think it's because we're playing a few cards that are a little slower but a little better against some other things that are making us kind of weak in that spot. So we do have some extra things in the sideboard that can help those matchups a little bit, especially when you're talking about cards like Flunk, because that also lets you get around the selfless savior issue a little bit. We also do have some stuff that just kills all the things that cost two or less, right? So that's an option. There's a few different things there that we've actually put in the sideboard that can help that fight quite a bit. But outside of the Winota matchup, it actually felt like everything was at least playable and winnable. But that one's the one that we struggled with the most. Uh, a lot of times, just because if you miss a land or you skip on something or whatever, it's just so devastating, especially when you have some of those cards that are just already slower and then you get hit by like an elite spell binder that keeps you from playing like a binding of the old gods or something like that. So, which by the way, it's a spell binder stopping you from playing the binding, which is actually really weird now that I think about it. But anyway, that's a whole separate thing. But really, like I said, otherwise, the deck actually is very playable, very fun. Uh, I would say give it a look if you have the cards. It's pretty cool. But just know that the Winota matchup is going to be tough if you're playing best of one. But you will be at least pretty good against everything else. I mean, at least have a reasonable shot as long as you have patience whenever you're playing your games. So just keep that in mind. Now, as for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Thrumming Stone. Mostly because this came up on a discussion on my Twitter feed. And there's a very fun interaction with this if you are playing a whole bunch of Dragon's Approach. Because Thrumming Stone triggers every time you cast a spell, then you look at the top four cards of your library. If you find a copy of that card, you could play it. Well, when you have a bunch of things that cost the same, there's a chance you could rattle off, well, who knows, enough to be lethal 
if you get lucky you know so i don't know is it a thing probably not but it's a card that's still expensive it's been expensive for a very long time but if you got your hands on some and you experiment in a fun like casual kitchen table deck that's kind of goofy give it a try i'd be curious to find out how it goes if you do it please come by my discord and let me know <laughs> speaking of which don't forget if you want this deck list you can get it in the description down below like always sideboard included for best of three if you want to play best of one or three and you can also get the link to my discord down there as well if you come by talk about wacky deck shenanigans that you're doing or just get help with stuff or just come chat about all types of things magic or otherwise we have a bunch of people and it's like over 400 folks now so thank you all for stopping by and having some fun and if you'd be so kind so kind please hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell those let me know that you appreciate me and love me and then let you know every time i have a video up even when i'm doing weird things like this by request but overall that's all i have for you for now we'll see you next time